I'd like to discuss some very important aspects of vitamin A, um, not just the positive benefits, but the dark side as well. Vitamin A is typically known as the non-keratinizing vitamin. Now, what does that mean? Keratinization is a condition that causes skin issues. So if you have an overgrowth of keratin, it's not going to be at the right moisture. It's going to be kind of dry. And so this is one reason why if you have a deficiency of vitamin A or even an excess, it can really affect your skin in many ways. On the flip side of that, vitamin A is also uh, involved in the epithelial layer of the skin. That is the outermost layer of your inner skin that is lining your body. And so vitamin A has a lot to do with controlling what that skin turns into. Is it going to be normal skin cells or abnormal skin cells? And when we're talking about the inside of the body too, we're talking about the maintenance of the inner skin, your inner sinuses, the esophagus, the digestive system. And so this is why vitamin A is important for the immune system, because the skin, both external and internal, is one of the immune barriers. And so if you're deficient in vitamin A, you can actually weaken that barrier and allow pathogens to cross over. Vitamin A is also uh, involved in the immune system, specifically the what's called the T regulatory cells. And that has a lot to do with whether a person can develop an autoimmune disease or not. And so there's this association also with a vitamin A deficiency and an autoimmune problem with the thyroid either Graves or Hashimoto's. And so if someone's deficient, it could increase the risk for either one of those. And also vitamin A allows iodine to be absorbed. So there's an iodine relationship between vitamin A as well. And typically if you're deficient in vitamin A, you're gonna have problems with night vision. Uh, if you're severely deficient, uh, you may even go blind. Other symptoms could include dry eyes, a poor immune system, skin problems, and even bone issues. So if a child has a deficiency of vitamin A, they can have all sorts of just abnormal bone uh, development. Also on the flip side, too much of vitamin A can create symptoms that mimic a deficiency of vitamin A. Abnormal bone formations, dry lips, dry skin, double vision, alopecia, oily skin, peeling skin, heart valve calcification, which could be a big problem, hypercalcemia, too much calcium in the blood. Normally too much vitamin D will do that, but vitamin A is also involved. Another one is intracranial pressure. So you have this headache with all this pressure in your skull. Now here's what you need to know about the toxicity symptoms. Typically you would have to consume over 500 grams of polar bear liver or the liver from a walrus or a liver from a moose, which is very unlikely. The most likely source is taking it from some synthetic vitamin A. This is one reason why I never recommend taking vitamin A as a supplement, unless it comes from a natural source, it's in a food source, or it's natural, because 98% of all vitamins, including vitamin A, are made synthetically. And I'm not just talking about the retinol version, which is the active form, I'm talking about the pre-vitamin A as beta carotene. That's also sold synthetically and it comes with its own package. In fact, there's some studies that shows that it can increase your risk of getting cancer of the lung, especially if you're a smoker or drink more than one glass of alcohol per day. If you're at the same time taking this beta carotene synthetically, it can increase your risk of getting tumors or cancer, which is crazy. So this is why I'm very cautious about the synthetic vitamin A as a fortification in our foods, as well as in our vitamins. It's much better to get vitamin A from your foods, okay? And that would be cod liver oil, egg yolks, grass-fed butter, grass-fed cheese, and actual liver. These are excellent sources of the active form of vitamin A, which is retinol. Realize if you're taking the inactive form, uh, beta carotene from food, that's good too. You never have to worry about toxicity because it's never gonna happen because of the conversion from beta carotene to retinol is not very efficient and it takes a lot of it to convert to the active form. So there's some reports that um, like you would need six times as much beta carotene to turn into one unit of retinol, but there's mixed reviews. 
on that, all you need to know is it takes a lot more beta carotene to turn into the active form of retinol. But at least if it comes from a natural source, you're never gonna have to worry about the toxicity. It's only when you get into the synthetic antioxidant beta carotene that you have to be concerned about it. But if you're getting your beta carotene from like kale or any type of dark leafy green vegetable or even carrots, okay, you're not gonna have to worry about toxicity. But realize it takes a lot of that to convert to this active form. The other thing about vitamin A deficiencies, uh, number one, like if someone's not consuming a lot of, of those foods I just mentioned, they could be deficient, especially if they're relying on just the precursor, beta carotene. But also if there's a problem in the liver, okay, let's say for example, you have a fatty liver and maybe you have a gut, you have belly fat, and you're not realizing that definitely means you have a fatty liver or you might have liver damage from cirrhosis or any other type of inflammatory condition with the liver. That means you're not gonna store as much vitamin A. And so your capacity to use vitamin A from that stored vitamin A is going to be minimized. And that can end up as a deficiency as well, especially if you have a problem with the gallbladder. Let's say you're not producing enough bile, or let's say you had your gallbladder removed, or whatever, that can show up in a lack of absorption of that fat-soluble nutrient from your diet. And on top of all of that, there's one synthetic version of vitamin A. It's in Accutane for acne. I'm not sure if you ever heard about it before, but it's a synthetic vitamin A compound that has a black box warning on it of increased risk of depression, suicide, and psychosis. Yeah, a synthetic vitamin A. So if synthetic vitamin A creates those symptoms, not to mention another big symptom called teratogenic effects, which basically are birth defects. So if a woman is taking Accutane while she is pregnant, that child could end up with birth defects and developmental problems and even infertility or a stillbirth. So this synthetic vitamin A comes with its own problems. If someone does have a toxicity of vitamin A, there is uh, some antidotes, well, at least uh, researched on animals, okay? So if you take more vitamin E, that can help reduce the toxic effects. If you take vitamin K, K1, that can reduce some of the effects, as well as taking something called red yeast rice which is a common supplement that a lot of people take uh, to lower their cholesterol. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side.